let's talk about this now at the big table with NJ Ayuk, who's the CEO of Centur Centurion Law Group and the author of Big Barrels, African Oil and Gas and The Quest for Prosperity. It's great to have you with us again in the studio. Thank you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed reading Big Barrels and the first question that came to mind is we've seen the problems that oil can create in terms of low prices when a government relies on it for revenue, in terms of uh, climate change and problems there as well. Um, so why should the continent, the African continent, even think about relying on it for power and for income? Because it's a, it's a very valuable resource for Africa. The problem you have in Africa right now is that when the prices were high, we did not do all the right things. So that tells you that the growth that you actually had most African countries actually experienced was artificial. It was not really, really real growth because that growth re relied on high commodity prices. It did not really rely on them boosting manufacturing sector, them boosting infrastructure, them boosting the agricultural sector. So the resource, you have to still rely on it because it can be an engineer for new growth. So what you look at today, what you find in Africa is that you can still use this resource and boost the manufacturing sector. You can still use this resource and boost the economy. So even when the prices are low, you can still increase growth within Africa. And how much would you say um, of an influence do African oil companies have on oil prices? African oil companies do not really have a big influence on oil prices because African oil com companies are still small. Most of the African oil, national oil companies in Africa, they are basically asset managers. They are not real operators of the assets. So they still have to rely on big oil, um, on, on big oil companies coming in from Europe, China, and the US. Now the governments can make an impact. But the problem you, we find today is that among all African OPEC states, you have Algeria, Libya, Ga um, Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, Nigeria, Angola. It's only about 10 to 12 percent of the current output. Saudi Arabia is talking about 22 percent. So you have you don't really have that much clout in the game to determine the, the price, the price game. How much clout would you say and what role do, for example, big players like Angola and Nigeria have in the OPEC cartel? They can have a voice if they use it well. They have the African Petroleum Producers Association. It has not really functioned the way it needs to function. So if Africa takes a model like what they use during the climate change negotiations, where Africa had a unified position, a unified policy, and they really made Africa voices head, it's up to the African states mm -hmm to come together and say, here is our position, and we're going to make ensure that the big operators listen and the market listen to us. One final last word. You said that previously they didn't do the right thing in terms of fostering the potential of oil. What is the right thing? One idea. Right big idea is gas to power. That is going to be the big things. I always say you cannot run industries with generators. So you really have to turn your game up use your resources locally and really drive growth. Because when you drive growth within Africa, everybody participates. And I think that is and the future of the Africa oil and gas industry. N.J. Ayuk, CEO of Centurion Law and author of Big Barrels, looking at African oil and gas and the quest for prosperity. Thank you very much Thank for being so much. with us here on DW.